Hi everyone! Today I just wanted to sit down for a little chat and talk to you guys about um, a field that's really interesting to me. And if you're on YouTube, it's probably interesting to you. So if you're at all interested in digital rhetoric, in the digital atmosphere, or even in the concept of digital entrepreneurship as a whole, keep watching because I'm going to talk pretty in depth about different ramifications of this type of career. So as for the concept of digital entrepreneurship, you probably have a little bit of an understanding about it if you're on YouTube right now. Whether you're a creator or you're just someone here to watch videos that you subscribe to, you pretty much understand how digital entrepreneurship works. That is, unless you're here to watch YouTube videos um, that have to do with, you know, music or, you know, funny bloopers from your favorite TV shows. But if you're here to watch someone who started on YouTube, then you are participating in digital entrepreneurship. And that's really interesting because your click matters in ways that we might not think that they do. As someone who is a content creator, I was really interested to find the ways that I could initially make money off of my YouTube videos. By monetizing my videos, I was able to make a certain amount of money every single time someone clicked one of the ads on my videos. This was super interesting because I found myself telling my friends, you know, if you're watching my YouTube videos, make sure, you know, give a click to the ads every now and then just, you know, because I can make some money off it. And obviously my friends and family who watch my videos were more than happy to oblige. But it is interesting because I was always under the impression that YouTubers were paid based on the amount of views that they get on the video. For example, if I had 100 views on my video, I was paid, say, one cent per every view. But that's actually not how it works. YouTubers are paid primarily through advertisements on their channel, as well as um, sponsorship deals that they get through their products. And sponsorships is where it can get a little hairy. Spon a lot of YouTubers got in trouble a little while back because they were talking about products or services in their videos that they truly, truly did not believe in. They were only talking about them because they were getting paid to do so. And this gets a little ethically hairy. Based on the law now, YouTubers are required to say any product that they were given for free and paid to talk about. This helps the viewer see just where the YouTuber is getting their money from and see just how genuine they're being. This is really big in the beauty community when a lot of the videos are talking about products, how they work, and whether or not you should buy them. It's really hard to trust someone if you think that they're only in it for money. But digital entrepreneurship can go outside the realm of just YouTube videos as well. Digital entrepreneurship can talk about anything where someone self-brands themselves into becoming an empire. For example, there's a ton of blogs out there that have become really big and made tons of money. And blogs are a lot more interesting. When we talk about blogs in terms of making money, we tend to think that it is also per clicks, per shares, whatever. But blogs are also similarly, they also garner their money similarly. They garner money through affiliate deals and through advertisements on their page. As Gary Vaynerchuk says, a really easy way to make money is if you're a cooking blog, you would call up a close restaurant and ask them if they wanted to sell advertisements on your page. This way, this is a win-win deal for the people who are putting ads on your page and for you because in the end you're making money. But what's really interesting about digital entrepreneurship is that as far as careers go, it's a pretty open system. There's no rules or boundaries that sort of limit the type of content that digital entrepreneurs can create or limit who can, you know, make it big with digital entrepreneurship. For example, there's no, you know, set of education levels, there's no nothing like that when you think about digital entrepreneurship. It's really anyone who has a computer, a tablet, or a phone can sit down, put their thoughts on a page, and hope that people like it. We have a pretty basic understanding of digital entrepreneurship by means of sort of echoes of traditional careers. For example, we can see why a cooking blog would be successful because cooking. Everybody has cooked since the dawn of time. The Food Network is a thing. Cookbooks do great in sales. So it's no surprise that a blog, which is a fast way to read about cooking, would do really well. But how can we explain blogs like TuckerMax.com, for example? If you visit that website, you'll see a young adult male who's bragging about the fact that he's an asshole. That's literally all there is to it. It's him bragging about drunk ex... ex <laughs> It's him bragging about drunk escapades, women he slept with, different things like that that seem really, really distasteful. It's interesting that he's had four Amazon book deals and a movie made about him. Why would anyone ever want to read a site like that? 
Well, I've thought a lot about it and a lot about digital entrepreneurship as a whole. And I think that to a degree, people log on to different blogs because it's a facet of themselves. Just like someone who's interested in cooking logs into a cooking blog, someone who, you know, maybe has a little bit of an inner asshole wants to read Tucker Max because who would know? There's also a little bit of that justification. When you're reading an account of someone else online, you're able to say, oh, I guess my drunken experiences weren't that bad in comparison to Tucker Max. There's also that little bit of gratification you get when you feel a little angry at something you read online. Blogs serve more than one purpose, and it's really hard to analyze them and the way that they work in the digital economy as a whole without understanding how multifaceted the system is. I hope I've brought some new and interesting ideas about digital entrepreneurship to you guys today, and I hope to see you again soon.